I mean, the, the relationship is kind of new, so we are still learning things about each other. Uh, like, I drink, he doesn't. So he likes to judge me, okay? <laughs> so it was a few weeks ago, it's a Saturday, it's like 11.30 in the morning, and um, I, uh, <laughs> he looked at me and he was like, Mia, what the hell are you doing? It's not even noon, and I was like, it's game day, shut up, you know? And, and then he goes, yeah, but you are watching Harry Potter. Oh, well, well, um, good observation, but uh, Quidditch is a game, all right? The best comics in America all have one thing in common. They're on this episode. So lose the remote, it's time for laughs. Welcome to Last, everybody. I'm your host, Trey Elliott, and tonight we're bringing you the best of the best in stand-up comedy. That's right, people. I said the best. So let's head 88 miles outside of LA to our home comedy club, the Pachanga Comedy Club Resort and Casino. Here's Chris Strait. I have two kids, eight and a half and four. Uh, that's enough of a gap. The older one wants to know what's happening when the younger one is on the way. But four is not old enough that I can be totally honest with the answer. I ended up giving half the story. Daddy, why is there a baby in mommy's tummy? Because you took a nap. <laughs> you shut the hell up for three seconds. That's it, two kids, I'm done. I don't want to hear anything from old people either. All right, I'm tired of that. They're always in our face. Oh, look at you kids today, you're soft. You got two kids and you're tired. We had eight kids and we were fine. <laughs> yeah, sure you were, because back then parenting was this. Don't, and we're done here, that's it, I don't. <laughs> Who can't handle that responsibility? <laughs> A couple generations back, they actually had eight kids because they honestly thought half of you were gonna die. That's how little they care. <laughs> These three are on purpose. These three are for spare parts. That's what we're doing. We might... Doctors are expensive. Field workers are free when you make them yourself. That's why they had kids. I've been on a uh, life transformation journey um, the past few years. I, um... I, uh, I got healthy, you guys. I did, I'm very excited about it. I wanna tell you how I did it. I, uh, I joined a weight loss pool with my friends, okay? And when we did our initial weigh-in, they hooked us up to a postage scale. And I'm not gonna tell you how much I used to weigh, but if you were to mail me, it would've cost like $3,000. Um, <laughs> yeah. My friends are looking at me like, we need to send her ground. Um. Hey you, pick up your phone. It's time to start tweeting. And matter of fact, when you tweet, you're gonna use your hashtag, LaughsTV. We're about to make Twitter funny again. Here's my man Zoltan Kazis at Brad Gavis Comedy Club in Las Vegas, Nevada. Las Vegas. <laughs> Maybe. It's a drinking town. You can drink as much as you want here, can't you? Yeah. That's why I like this. You can drink as much as you want. You'll never be that guy. It's physically impossible. You can try. Bless your hearts, you can try. I tried. One time I stumbled out of the lovely MGM Grand Resorts, hammered, and I'm like, oh man, I think I'm that guy. Then I looked to the left and I saw some guy doubled over into the side of a cab and started puking on his own shoes. And when I saw that, I went, Jesus. Maybe I can drive. Uh, Cause I'm hammered, but I'm not. Pukey McLoafers over here. I did hold it together. Glad I made it up here. The parking around here was great. I'm excited about that. Cause where I stay, the parking is horrible. And they got those dumb signs. You ever see that sign that say no parking anytime? It says no parking anytime. Why you don't just say no parking? <laughs> Doesn't it seem like the sign got an attitude? <laughs> or it's frustrated? Like it said, no parking at any time. It's like, okay. 
I understand. I like the signs that say no stopping anytime. Cause it's like those signs are doing you a favor. Like it's saying no stopping. You're like, thanks sign. It's like anytime. <laughs> I got you. Why is wheelchair parking so close? I figure if you got wheels. <laughs> and you in the chair. You should be coming from across the lot. You got the best of both worlds. I have 10 years of childcare experience. Uh, not because I particularly love working with kids, just because they're easy jobs for me to get. Like, I know what I look like, you know? I look Mormon. I look very trustworthy. People just leave their children with me without asking many questions. And I used to be a camp counselor, and we'd have to apply sunscreen to the kids before going out on field trips until one day when a mother complained that she felt it was very inappropriate for the staff members to be touching the children like that. So we had to implement a new rule, and the new rule was that the kids had to apply sunscreen to each other. <laughs> because it's way less creepy when adults are standing around watching a bunch of eight-year-olds Wrap each other down with body lotion. <laughs> Just lather it up, Billy. <laughs> Let's do this. Gotta get to Magic Mountain. This is the thing, gang. I'm all raced out when it comes to movies. All raced out. Like, it's not that they aren't great movies, but it's too many at the same time, right? Like, we had Django, we had The Help, we had The Butler, and then, we, of course, we had the greatest race movie of all time. 12 Years a Slave, which I don't know if you saw, a great movie, won a bunch of awards, great acting, it was amazing. But I didn't think I was gonna like it even before I saw the movie, I didn't think I was gonna like it because all of my friends kept com coming up to me and saying the exact same thing every single time. They'd be like, Charles, 12 Years a Slave, you have to see this movie, it would change your life. 12 Years a Slave would change your life. I'm like, well, what's the movie about? Oh, it's about a dude who was free and then he was a slave for 12 years, for 12 whole years. He was wrongfully enslaved, wrongfully enslaved. I'm like, word. <laughs> wrongfully enslaved? You know who else was wrongfully enslaved? Uh, slaves, bitch, that's who was wrongfully enslaved. What are you, what are you talking about? Wrongfully enslaved, who was rightfully enslaved? Show me that guy, where's his movie? He needs a script. I can't blame my friends, man. I can't blame them, because that's how Hollywood is, right? Hollywood does that. They make you focus on a character no matter what like, the, the situation is. You become emotionally attached and invested in that character. Like, I don't know if any of you have ever seen a movie or read a book called Boy in the Striped Pajamas, right? But it was a great movie and a great story, right? Great, great story. If you haven't seen it or read it, it takes place during the Holocaust, right? A little German boy, a little Jewish boy. They become friends. The little German boy goes to find his Jewish friend in the camps. They think the little German boy is Jewish, so they capture him and take him to the gas chambers with like hundreds of other Jews. Now I'm watching this with this girl that I was dating at the time, and she leans into me and she goes, oh my God, I hope someone saves him. Really? Just him? <laughs> you don't see anybody else? <laughs> that could use some saving right about now. We're gonna take a break to show some ads to some online colleges, and then when we get back, we're gonna make fun of some online colleges. Stick around, more laughs coming up. Welcome back to Laughs. We good, right? We so cool? <laughs> all right, good, just making sure. Listen, here's my man, all the way from Detroit, Josh Adams. <laughs> it's just different living there, man. The police can't even control nothing. Like, it's how bad it is in Detroit. I seen a police officer get out of a police car and put the club on it. I knew it was time to move when I seen that. <laughs> I was like, they taking your stuff, it's a wrap. 
It's different, man. It's just a weird place to be from. Like, if you ever end up in Detroit, like, during Halloween, never go to a haunted house in Detroit. Never go, because there's nothing scary about a haunted house in Detroit. Only thing scary about it is standing outside of the haunted house. That's the scariest part. <laughs> Everywhere outside of the haunted house is scary. Like, I'm talking about, we driving, we pull into the parking lot, there's a dude with a ski mask, like, yeah, I'm here to valet park your car. <laughs> I look at my girl like, he think I'm stupid, don't he? I'm like, get away before I stab you, sir. <laughs> Me and my girl, we sitting in line, we waiting to go into the haunted house. And then we ready to, you know, for the whole experience. You hear like a chainsaw in the background and you hear like a witch cackle. And then out of nowhere, a zombie just jumped out like, boo! Hey, I got some kush on me, cuz. I'm like, what is you talking about, man? Are you trying to sell us weed, bro? What are you doing? was mad as hell, like, go get your manager, dog. The manager come back, like, sir, is there a problem? I'm like, yeah, your zombie just tried to sell us some kush, sir, that's the damn problem. He like, oh, I'm sorry, did you just want some regular weed? I don't understand, sir, like. <laughs> you know this is a crack house, right? Like, where did you think he was at? I was like, baby, we've been standing in the line of a crack house the whole time. My GPS must be broke. Phoenix, Arizona, you guys, that's where I'm from. Uh, thank you, yeah, I recently moved to Chicago uh, to experience life with sleeves. What's up, yeah. That's a smooth transition from year-round flip-flops to seasonal depression. It's like, which outfit should I wear? Oh, both. I've learned scarves have a purpose. I did not know that before. And apparently, the Mexican-American War is over. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh my God, no one told Arizona. <laughs> oh, we are still fighting strong. <laughs> They're like, Emily, maybe we should read a book. Mm, we don't read in Phoenix. The university's online. <laughs> Yeah, a couple of my friends played fantasy football there, so. <laughs> if you missed that joke, you probably go to University of Phoenix. <laughs> there's a lot of things you could do online, folks. You could get a degree, you could become a minister, but there's one thing that you can do that would change your life forever. That's going on to youtube.com slash TV show. Subscribe right now to change your life. It did for me. I sit down on a plane recently, the man next to me is reading the paper, okay? The science section headline of the paper said, T uh, Texas flooding, global warming, <laughs> question mark. This guy goes, look at this, big bunch of bull, global warming my ass. Science ain't never done one thing for one person ever. <laughs> and I'm thinking, we're on a plane. <laughs> Is it me? What the hell? A preacher in Texas recently said that global warming is God's revenge for abortion. Statistically, there's got to be a couple of people in this room that are thinking the same thing I thought when I read that. A preacher in Texas believes in global warming? We're winning! We're winning the battle! We've been tossing pebbles into the ocean and they're starting to stack up. We got more laughs coming up, or maybe not. Stick around, we'll figure this out together. Welcome back to Laughs. Now everything ain't always what it looks like. It's time for you to meet Pedro Salinas. Very racially tumultuous time, let's figure it out, Pachanga, let's fix it today. Uh, I don't even know what to say about it. I don't even know what I am, you know what I mean? Because my name is Pedro Salinas, but I look like that's not true. I don't look like... <laughs> my name at all. I look more like I moved into my name and displaced a working class family. I'm like, oh, this name is so authentic. The burritos in this name are so good. It's a weird problem to have not looking like your name. Let me see if you guys can relate. Have you ever tried to introduce yourself to somebody and they disagreed? <laughs> hey, my name is Pedro. No, it's not. Well, I don't know where we go from here. Uh, feel like we're not gonna have a ton in common. 
Who do you think I am, the worst undercover cop of all time? Hey, uh, hola, mi nombre es Pedro. Tienes black tar heroin? <laughs> I'm on to you, mister. <laughs> How do you be part of the solution? How do you have, you know, I'm trying to get a more diverse friend group racially, you know? My first goal is in 2015, I vowed to have sex with a member of every ethnicity represented on the University of Phoenix brochure. <laughs> Everyone, I'm gonna be very thorough. Asian girl in a wheelchair. Hispanic guy catching a frisbee. The one guy on the acapella troupe. I'm gonna do them all, you know? Follow us on facebook.com slash last TV show. Leave comments, share stories, follow these comedians to see where they're gonna be live. And while we're on the roll, here's Jay Black. He's about to offend an entire region. Oh, and his last name has to be Black. Here we go. I envy the stupid, you know why? Because stupid people are never sad for very long. Have you noticed that? Smart people are miserable. You ever have a conversation with a smart person, his life sucks, like everything sucks. I'm in therapy, I'm on Prozac. You know what therapy is for a stupid person? Skittles. That's all you need. Like, I'm sad, here's some Skittles, yay. Yay, let's go buy a Snuggie. Yay, and by the way, if you own a Snuggie, I'm sorry. Not for the joke, but for your life choices because that is a blanket for idiots. And I know a lot of you just got mad at me. A lot of you are like, hey man, I just like to be warm while I watch TV. Listen, I'm not trying to take your right to wear a robe backwards away. Here's my problem, it's that commercial. You seen that commercial? Wearing a regular blanket's difficult. No, it's not. If you can't figure out how to wear a blanket, you need to die. It's a damn rectangle, that's all it is. It's X times Y. It's not algebra, just die so the rest of us may live. There's dumb people, listen, Southern people, if you're from the South just in general, I don't like you. Because I'm, listen, I'm not, I am from this area and I don't understand Southern people, because you're nice. I don't like nice people. I like jerk offs. Hey. Philadelphia, you are my people. They put up with stuff down there we would never put up with. I was at a McDonald's in Mississippi. Here's my impression of the guy in front of me. Let's see, what do I want? There's a lot of good choices here. What do I... In the Northeast of America, he'd be pulled from the line and beaten to death. And there wouldn't be a judge to convict him. How long was he taking? Oh no, you should have killed him. That's exactly right. How else is he to learn? Ah, uh, yep. The lawyers are gonna be working overtime for this episode. And we haven't even seen Tom Simmons. Enough with the stand-up comedy. Here comes some sit-down comedy. I'm about to get all up in it. <laughs> Welcome back to Laughs, people. It's time to unleash the comedy crackage. So, then there's this with Tom Simmons. Researchers at Stanford found out that taking a walk in a natural forest can help improve people's moods and reduce their negativity. So, see there? When I told you to take a hike, it's because I care about you. The best thing about walking through the woods is nobody asks you for a quarter. Researchers found that people who took walks in a natural setting had much lower levels of negative thoughts about themselves compared with people who took a similar walk in an urban setting, right? Which, to be honest with you, this sounds suspect. Sounds like they're trying to convince urban people to go into the woods when everyone knows that urban means black. Nice try, white folk. But there's not a black person alive who thinks something good will happen from following white folks into the woods. Researchers found that to get to the positive effect of a walk, you needed to be in a place of natural greenery, you know, like a forest or a grassy meadow or Snoop Dogg's basement. Research shows that being in nature makes it hard to be negative, sure, because there aren't other people around. They should have had the participants take their families with them. Then it wouldn't have been all rosy. They'd have been like, my feet hurt. Are we there yet? I keep getting bitten by mosquitoes. Who's the creepy guy with the clipboard? It's a scam. Okay. Well, the 50% of the people in the United States now live in urban areas, and that number is expected to reach 70% by 2050, which means we can either build more parks or make more drugs. Personally, I think we might want to try the parks, you know, recreationally. Should probably take a few more long walks in the woods myself. Well, all right, people, that's the end of our show. I enjoyed myself. I'm your host, Trey Elliott. I hope you guys enjoyed yourself. We will see you next week, and until then, 
keep laughing. <laughs> See, like me. See ya. <laughs> Oh, you know what you want to do now, right? <laughs> you want to subscribe, don't you? Well, do it. Come on, I'm watching. Do it. Do it. Don't be scared. Do it.